Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Johnny Rodriguez. I'm with the Illinois Department of Revenue. Uh, today, we will be talking about public service careers here in the state of Illinois Department of Revenue, uh, specifically those positions uh, with our law department. Rewarding careers in public service with a law degree. So the state of Illinois Department of Revenue has six locations throughout the state of Illinois. Uh, our headquarters is down in Springfield. We have uh, over 1,100 employees at that location. Our second location is out of Chicago. Here in the Cook County office, we are at 555 West Monroe. Uh, and we have other four other locations, but primarily the two main offices that our um, technical advisors work out of our Springfield and Chicago. The great thing about working for the state of Illinois, um, we have a robust benefits package. We offer generous time off. This includes sick time, vacation time, personal, and 13 paid holidays every year. Uh, it, everything specific through each agency. Uh, we do have a training uh, depending on what vacation time you have available. Uh, once you start as the day one, uh, you start earning up to uh, 12 sick days per year. Uh, we do have two additional uh, holidays other than the federal government. Uh, this is the day after Thanksgiving and Lincoln's birthday. Employees qualify for medical, dental, vision, and life insurance as of day one. There is no waiting periods. Uh, we do offer pre-tax programs such as dependent care to help with child care lost, uh, child care cost, uh, a health savings program, which you can take with you uh, when you leave the state. Uh, we also have a commuter savings program. We do have a Be Well program, which is a statewide program. Uh, it's a wellness program offered to all employers. It offers awareness articles, webinars, resources for finance, health, and fitness. Uh, we also have some additional benefits uh, with the state, such as accident insurance coverage, critical illness coverage, hospital indemnity coverage, legal ease, identity theft, protection coverage, pet insurance, auto and home insurance, purchasing power adoption benefits, and weight loss benefit. As a state government employee, you may be eligible for public service loan forgiveness program. Uh, this program forgives the remaining balance of your direct loans after you've made 120 qualifying monthly payments under qualifying repayment plan while working full time for a qualifying employer. Illinois Department of Revenue offers a tuition reimbursement for the maximum of $5,000 per fiscal year for full time employees and covers 100% tuition and lab fees at any accredited public institution and 80% at any accredited private institution. The state of Illinois offers a pension and a deferred compensation as another revenue stream for retirement. Also, if an employee works for the state of Illinois for at least 20 years, the state will pay for employees premiums or part retirement. We also have a 529 college savings plan enrollment, uh, which is available through the Illinois Treasurer's Office. One of the great benefits for a career in the Illinois Department of Revenue is our commitment to career advancement. Uh, some of our frontline supervisors and upper management started their careers as training titles. Uh, we offer uh, each individual uh, with IDOR with a choice to support individual development uh, for their own staff to help them for their own careers. Uh, for those who are in the union, we do have upper mobility. Uh, if you are a union member and their families can earn an associate's degree with uh, ASME uh, through Gateway Community College. Uh, and we have a variety of different courses that could be included. Uh, for uh, learning through healthcare management, labor, criminal justice, accounting, early childhood education, students can focus on labor studies, programming, cybersecurity, finance, marketing, human resources, and more. So the hiring process uh, for all applications for the Illinois Department of Revenue, you have to apply through uh, the work.illinois.gov website. You must upload and submit your resume. You might you need to set up a profile on the work.illinois.gov website. Uh, IDOR will contact you for the interview offer. Uh, if you do pass the minimum qualifications, you'll be going through the next process. Uh, if you don't answer all your questions on your um, application process, uh, you might not meet the minimum qualification, and then you will receive an email within 48 hours letting you know that you did not meet the minimum qualification. So make sure when you're answering those questions through the application process, uh, make sure that it completes uh, everything is uh, matching what you have on your resume. In addition to that, make sure that it uh, it answers the complete question. So if you partially answer a question, uh, you might only have partial part of that question, and you might be disqualifying yourself. 
Uh, great thing about interviews with the state of Illinois. Um, it's a virtual, uh, it's via WebEx. We have a three panel uh, member. Uh, make sure you show knowledge regarding the role itself on the industry. Articulate clearly your main points and details when necessary, uh, but don't lose, don't lose focus on the main idea. Uh, make sure to answer all questions. Uh, show how passionate you are. Let them see you're generally interested about what they do and what you possibly are going to be doing. Uh, and make sure you use your past experience to build your foundation. Uh, whenever possible, direct the narrative of your answers to be a role itself. Uh, and lastly, show confidence. Understand what gives you confidence. Uh, use that to show your full potential. Per the Illinois Equal Pay Act, agencies should not consider or rely on voluntary disclosure of salary history or factor determining whether to offer job applicant employment. Uh, for salary justification tips, uh, remember, know your worth as an articulated. Uh, provide reasons why your education level warrants a higher salary. Uh, give examples of skill sets, experience, and accomplishments. And please do not disclose your current salary in your justification letter. So, if you're interested in applying for position with the state of Illinois, specifically with the Department of Revenue, uh, you will go directly to tax.illinois.gov. Uh, within this page, uh, you will see the About Outdoor icon. You will click on that icon, and it will take you to our uh, job postings, uh, or our employment opportunities page where our job postings are set. So if you are interested for any job postings, you click on job posting, that will take you directly to the work.illinois.gov page where all postings will be posted. Uh, this is the work.illinois.gov page. As I said, you need to set up a profile in order to be able to apply for any position within the state. Uh, if you don't set up a profile, then you won't be able to apply. Understand that all of our postings are open anywhere from between 10 to 15 business days. You must apply within that time frame. If you don't apply within that time frame, what ends up happening, the application closes and you're no longer able to apply for that position. Uh, once again, uh, not only does the Department of Revenue uh, post their jobs through this website, uh, all other state agencies under the governor's office will post their jobs through there. So make sure you go on there frequently, uh, set up to receive uh, text message alerts. So whenever opportunities become available, you will receive either email or you receive a text message and make sure to apply within that time frame. Secondary to this, uh, on the postings, make sure you read through the postings. Uh, the postings are very important when you're looking through them uh, due to the number of dates that it has on there. So if the date says you need to apply by tonight at midnight and you apply a minute after, uh, you won't be able to apply for that position. So uh, a lot of people sometimes they disqualify themselves because they're not applying on time. Uh, so the great thing about working for the state of Illinois, specifically with Department of Revenue, I would say, um, you know, we are successfully able to recruit and hire a very inclusive and qualified, diverse workforce. We support this through our DIA activities, our commitment, and is involved with a committee where we are helping uh, to hire different goals through the state of Illinois. Uh, we know how diverse the state is, so we have this diversity enrichment program where we meet other employees within the Illinois Department of Revenue to meet these guidelines and be able to uh, reach out to other communities. Um, Previously, you saw our Willer Ice building. Uh, at this picture, you see the Chicago office. Uh, we're so lucky to have two of the largest offices here in the Chicagoland area. In spirit, we have an on-site daycare and we offer public education seminars across the state for taxpayers. Uh, we do have a rec club uh, out of the Springfield location. Uh, we do have an internet where we are able to contain resources and announcements for all our calendars for all our employees. Uh, Today we were our, we have Mr. Colin. He is from the legal department. He's going to talk a little bit overview of different opportunities they have in their department and what are the needs that you look be looking to go with them. Good afternoon, Colin. Thanks, Johnny. Um, uh, yes, happy to talk a little bit today about uh, the legal area um, and and what types of opportunities we usually have uh, at, at IDOR Legal. Um, so I'm Colin Bose Carlson. I'm the general counsel uh, here at the Illinois Department of Revenue. Um, our legal group is is around 35 to 40 um, people total. Um, you know, that number fluctuates up and down a little bit depending on um, where we are in various hiring processes. Um, and there are uh, really two main areas 
um, where uh, law, uh, either lawyers or uh, recent law school grads tend to fall into, you know, mo most of our positions in legal um, fall into one of two categories, and those are uh, litigation, um, and our litigation positions are, are, are mostly based in Chicago, uh, because that's where most of the litigation is. Um, but uh, there are some exceptions to that. We also have litigators in Springfield. Um, and, and those attorneys litigate um, disputes with taxpayers, basically after everything else has uh, gone wrong or not worked. And, uh, you know, there's typically some sort of final uh, assessment of tax or, um, you know, final uh, liability owing that through all of the internal, um, you know, processes that we have to to dispute those liabilities, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's still there and, and, and it gets challenged. Um, taxpayers have a number of avenues available to them to challenge assessments by the, the Illinois Department of Revenue. Some of those uh, challenges are heard uh, here internally at our, our Office of Administrative Hearings. Um, many of them are brought in the Illinois Independent Tax Tribunal, which is uh, uh, a, a, an independent forum that was uh, set up uh, some time ago, um, taxpayers were looking for, uh, you know, a, a court, a, a forum that had specific tax expertise that wasn't housed within the Department of Revenue. Um, and so a lot of our cases end up there. Um, and then there are cases um, in in circuit court and appellate courts, you know, just the, the state court uh, system. Um, at that point, when there are disputes in the state courts, those are, are uh, typically handled by the uh, attorney general's office. Uh, and so our litigators here at the department provide more of a, um, a support role to uh, attorney general lawyers who, who represent the department in, uh, in, in state court. Um, so I, I said there were two, two main areas. That's, that's that's one of them. Uh, and, and within litigation, we're pretty, um, we're organized into different uh, tax types. So most of our litigators either um, specialize in sales and excise taxes uh, and uh, or income tax. Um, uh, so those are sort of the two, two main areas within, um, within our litigation divisions in legal. Um, the, the second main category that our that our attorneys fall into is on the policy side um, and and um, most of our policy attorneys, unlike the litigators, most of our policy attorneys are based uh, here in Springfield, which is is where I am right now. I'm actually based in Chicago, but I I, I go back and forth because our our staff is um, roughly split between Chicago and, and Springfield. And so, the, the policy lawyers don't litigate cases. They don't generally deal with um, disputes with, with taxpayers. They, um, they play a significant role in how legislation gets enacted uh, around taxes. So they um, draft legislation um, this time of year uh, in particular uh, with the General Assembly returning into session and everybody coming up with, you know, all of these ideas for how they want to change the law and, and, and you know, lots of proposals filed um, in the legislature. We review all of those as they, as they relate to, to tax matters. Um, and so our policy attorneys do all of that heavy lifting and they review the legislation. Um, they make um, recommendations to legislators about, you know, this proposal that you've come up with doesn't work because of X, Y, and Z, or, um, you know, there's some sort of technical problem with it. Um, you know, we don't, when I say policy, we, we don't advocate generally for whether we think something is a a good policy or a 
bad policy from a revenue perspective. Our goal in, in providing feedback to legislators and, and others is, um, is, is, is your proposal workable? Is it something that if it passed into law is, is feasible for the department to do? Um, are there other ways to do it that, uh, you know, would work better? Things like that. Um, and our policy attorneys then also, um, they draft rules. Um, so once the legislature passes uh, legislation, it then becomes our job uh, usually to um, promulgate rules that um, provide more, more guidance and more clarity around what uh, our interpretation as the Department of Revenue is um, with respect to laws that have been uh, passed by the General Assembly and signed into law by the governor. Um, so those those two areas, litigation and, and policy, that's where most of our lawyers fall, and that's where we have the, the greatest demand for lawyers. We regularly have um, positions posted, uh, both policy and litigation positions. Um, the slide Johnny has up now, the TAPS positions are um, generally for uh, folks who are a couple years out of law school. I think it's a, I think someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's either a two or three year uh, legal experience minimum requirement. Um, but there are similar positions uh, that uh, come up and those are, are technical advisor two positions that um, do a lot of the same work. They're, they're similarly organized uh, in terms of, um, you know, there's either lit litigators or policy attorneys in those positions. These are good positions for recent law school grads because there's, um, you're required to have a law degree and, and be admitted to practice law, but there's no um, set number of years of legal experience that you need in practice to be eligible for those positions. Um, and a lot of uh, uh, younger attorneys come in as, as technical advisor twos and eventually promote up into, into TAPS roles, which is um, sort of a, a common way that that ha has worked within legal. Um, and there's always, uh, you know, one-offs. We regularly have postings in those main main areas, you know, tech, technical advisor two or TAPS, focusing either on litigation or or policy. But there, we we have lawyers at the department who don't fit into, you know, those neat sort of categories, um, and those are often positions that. Um, are similar to positions that you might find in any legal function within any sort of large employer. So, you know, the Department of Revenue has 1300 some odd employees. We enter into contracts with vendors. We have disputes with, um, you know, contract counterparties or employees. There's a, you know, a whole host of issues that come up um, that are not specific to tax policy or tax litigation. It's just the kind of stuff that um, uh, lawyers in any in, in, in any in-house environment, um, whether it's a state agency or a company, um, that 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 they face. So we have you know we have lawyers that that handle that that kind of stuff too. Although those are a little um, those come up uh, less frequently just because there's there's not as much uh, need uh, in that area. Um, so that's sort of a broad overview of what our what our positions look like, what our lawyers uh, here do. Um, and uh, of course, happy to take take any any questions anyone has. Colin, what is the growth potential with a position within IDOR? There is a lot of there's a lot of potential. I mean, uh, you know, like I said, there, you know, we have positions that come up that are ideal for for recent law grads that that very, very frequently move up into um, higher positions, taps positions. We we have it is we have lawyers who have spent you know the majority of their careers even as they approach retirement um, at the Illinois Department of Revenue 
Um, there's a, a, a lot of room to take on additional responsibility. There's a lot of room to to uh, you know move move around even within within legal. You know we have attorneys who came in as as new attorneys doing sales tax work, and as they grew in their career, decided they wanted to move into to income tax and and you know sort of rose their way through through that channel. Um, there's a lot of a lot of potential. We have a lot of. We we actually had our um, employee recognition ceremony here in Springfield today, and legal actually didn't have many. Um, uh, uh, we didn't have folks with too many anniversaries this year, but most years, I mean, the there are a lot of people who make their home uh, in, in devoting their practice um, here at IDOR and or with state government generally. You know, a lot of the work that lawyers do um, within state agencies is is transferable to other agencies. Um, you know, the sort of subject matter differs, obviously, from agency to agency. Um, we specialize in tax. We, we do tax litigation and tax policy. But the general process of um, rulemaking and legislation and and litigation involving a state agency is very similar from agency to agency. So you often also do see um, lawyers who who are interested in state state agency work um, work at different agencies throughout the course of of their careers. And that's that's very common too. Um, and uh, it's it's um, we see that a lot. Uh, what is the benefit of working in public service compared to the private sector? Uh, loan forgiveness is a huge <laughs> one. Law school is extremely expensive, um, and it and and it uh, and it just gets more and more expensive. I mean, I think that's a that's a huge, huge, um, that's a huge benefit. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, there's a there's a lifestyle component as well. I mean, I'm not going to say that our our lawyers don't have, you know, deadlines and and court dates and sometimes very overwhelming workloads. But um, you know, I, I've worked both here in this capacity. I I, I came from private practice and. Um, you know, for folks going who are in law school and want a legal career, I think, uh, you know, when you go into private practice, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into, especially if you want to work um, at a at a, a midsize or larger firm, um, you know, where billable hour is is the be all end all and um, you know, you're expected to 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 bill two thousand plus hours a, a a year, if not you know twenty five hundred, um, and that can be a very um, uh, challenging uh, lifestyle. Uh, you know, we have a thirty seven and a half hour work week. Um, most of our attorneys work. Um, you know, a lot of them work on flexible schedules. We have people who do who work, um, you know, four days, uh, alternative work schedules. There's, you know, there's a lot of flexibility. Um, and, uh, you know, you can do really interesting, substantive, important legal work and not worry about um, billing your time um, and and working all nights and weekends. Like I said, it's not that it doesn't happen sometimes, you know, especially when there's, you know, court cases coming up or during legislative session, um, you know, things happen. But generally, there there's a, it is a much different lifestyle working uh, within a state agency than in private practice. Um, I have a question. So, if a candidate was or a prospective employee was looking or debating between IDOR and a different state agency, why should that individual choose revenue? Um, 
tax is extremely, extremely invaluable experience. I think that a lot of people are afraid of tax um, and they shouldn't be. Uh, <laughs> But you know, I, I I think a lot of people in law school and in private practice, you know, they 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 look at the tax lawyers as sort of their own breed, if you will. Um, but there is such demand for it, and there always is that you know, if you can develop a background and an expertise in tax um, as an attorney there's real value in that both both within the state and 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 within you know other government agencies but also in private practice it just it opens a lot of doors that other practice areas may not um there's there there's never enough tax lawyers And what are some of the factors that you look for when determining who to move forward with? Uh, I, I mean, we, because I, I think, you know, to piggyback off of what I was just saying, you know, tax is complicated. It, it is, it is a um, highly technical area of the law. There's a lot of nuance. Um, you know, we, we look for a sort of intellectual curiosity and an, and an intellectual rigor um, because I it's something that you need, I think, to really become enmeshed in and familiar with navigating the tax code, which is uh, is is not something that most people are comfortable with, not something even most lawyers are comfortable with. So, um, you know, we definitely look for that. Um, in the same vein, you know, you you got to be a team player and, and interested in, in being mentored by more senior attorneys who um, you know, we have, we, we have attorneys here who are, are literally the experts uh on the illinois income tax and the retailer's occupation tax and property tax whatever it is um you know th that are the most seasoned attorneys um in that area and so you know with new candidates coming in we 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 want to make sure that people are coming in who want to develop relationships with uh, and have a sort of mentor mentee relationship with with our more senior senior attorneys. Thank you. No, good questions. Putting me on the spot. Well, Colin, thank you. Uh, we don't have any additional questions from the other attendees. Um, if we don't have any additional attendees, I will end the call. Uh, please utilize the chat box if you do have any questions. But thank you today, Colin, for uh, giving us giving us some great insight about. Uh, the public service uh oh, no I don't. no problem at all thanks johnny yeah all right well, i'll talk to you guys later thank you guys you have a great day take care